Astronomy is a natural science which is the study of celestial objects, such as stars, galaxies, planets, moons, and nebulae, the physics, chemistry, and evolution of such objects, and phenomena that originate outside the atmosphere of Earth, including supernovae explosions, gamma ray bursts, and cosmic microwave background radiation. A related but distinct subject, cosmology, is concerned with studying the universe as a whole. Astronomy is one of the oldest sciences. Prehistoric cultures have left astronomical artifacts such as the Egyptian monuments and Nubian monuments, and early civilizations such as the Babylonians, Greeks, Chinese, Indians, Iranians, and Maya performed methodical observations of the night sky. However, the invention of the telescope was required before astronomy was able to develop into a modern science. Historically, astronomy has included disciplines as diverse as astrometry, celestial navigation, observational astronomy, and the making of calendars, but professional astronomy is nowadays often considered to be synonymous with astrophysics. During the 20th century, the field of professional astronomy split into observational and theoretical branches. Observational astronomy is focused on acquiring data from observations of astronomical objects, which is then analyzed using basic principles of physics. Theoretical astronomy is oriented toward the development of computer or analytical models to describe astronomical objects and phenomena. The two fields complement each other, with theoretical astronomy seeking to explain the observational results and observations being used to confirm theoretical results. Astronomy is one of the few sciences where amateurs can still play an active role, especially in the discovery and observation of transient phenomena. Amateur astronomers have contributed to many important astronomical discoveries. 19th Century Observatory Sydney, Australia, 1872 Astronomy, from the Greek words astron, star, and anomy from nomos, law, or culture means law of the stars or culture of the stars depending on the translation. Astronomy should not to be confused with astrology, the belief system which claims that human affairs are correlated with the positions of celestial objects. Although the two fields share a common origin they are now entirely distinct. Use of terms astronomy and astrophysics Generally, either the term astronomy or astrophysics may be used to refer to the subject. Based on strict dictionary definitions, astronomy refers to the study of objects and matter outside the Earth's atmosphere, and of their physical and chemical properties and astrophysics refers to the branch of astronomy dealing with the behavior, physical properties, and dynamic processes of celestial objects and phenomena. In some cases, as in the introduction of the introductory textbook The Physical Universe by Frank Shu. Astronomy may be used to describe the qualitative study of the subject, whereas astrophysics is used to describe the physics-oriented version of the subject. However, since most modern astronomical research deals with subjects related to physics, modern astronomy could actually be called astrophysics. Few fields, such as astrometry, are purely astronomy rather than also astrophysics. Various departments in which scientists carry out research on this subject may use astronomy and astrophysics, partly depending on whether the department is historically affiliated with a physics department, and many professional astronomers have physics rather than astronomy degrees. One of the leading scientific journals in the field is the European journal named Astronomy and Astrophysics. The leading American journals are the Astrophysical Journal and the Astronomical Journal. History in early times, astronomy only comprised the observation and predictions of the motions of objects visible to the naked eye. In some locations, such as Stonehenge, early cultures assembled massive artifacts that possibly had some astronomical purpose. In addition to their ceremonial uses, these observatories could be employed to determine the seasons, an important factor in knowing when to plant crops, as well as in understanding the length of the year. Before tools such as the telescope were invented, early study of the stars was conducted using the naked eye. 
as civilizations developed, most notably in Mesopotamia, China, Egypt, Greece, India, and Central America, astronomical observatories were assembled, and ideas on the nature of the universe began to be explored. Most of early astronomy actually consisted of mapping the positions of the stars and planets, a science now referred to as astrometry. From these observations, early ideas about the motions of the planets were formed, and the nature of the Sun, Moon, and the Earth in the universe were explored philosophically. The Earth was believed to be the center of the universe with the Sun, the Moon, and the stars rotating around it. This is known as the geocentric model of the universe, or the Ptolemaic system, named after Ptolemy. A particularly important early development was the beginning of mathematical and scientific astronomy, which began among the Babylonians, who laid the foundations for the later astronomical traditions that developed in many other civilizations. The Babylonians discovered that lunar eclipses recurred in a repeating cycle known as a Saros. Greek equatorial sundial, Alexandria, on the Oxus, present-day Afghanistan 3rd 2nd century BCE. Following the Babylonians, significant advances in astronomy were made in ancient Greece and the Hellenistic world. Greek astronomy is characterized from the start by seeking a rational, physical explanation for celestial phenomena. In the 3rd century BC, Aristarchus of Samos estimated the size and distance of the moon and sun, and was the first to propose a heliocentric model of the solar system. In the 2nd century BC, Hipparchus discovered precession, calculated the size and distance of the moon, and invented the earliest known astronomical devices such as the astrolabe. Hipparchus also created a comprehensive catalog of 1,020 stars, and most of the constellations of the Northern Hemisphere derive from Greek astronomy. The Antikythera mechanism, c. 158 TBC, was an early analog computer designed to calculate the location of the Sun, Moon, and planets for a given date. Technological artifacts of similar complexity did not reappear until the 14th century, when mechanical astronomical clocks appeared in Europe. During the Middle Ages, astronomy was mostly stagnant in medieval Europe, at least until the 13th century. However, astronomy flourished in the Islamic world and other parts of the world. This led to the emergence of the first astronomical observatories in the Muslim world by the early 9th century. In 964, the Andromeda Galaxy, the largest galaxy in the local group, was discovered by the Persian astronomer Azafi, and first described in his book of fixed stars. The SN1006 supernova, the brightest apparent magnitude stellar event in recorded history, was observed by the Egyptian Arabic astronomer Ali Ibn Ridwan and the Chinese astronomers in 1006. Some of the prominent Islamic, mostly Persian and Arab, astronomers who made significant contributions to the science include Al-Badani, Tebet, Azafi, Abu Mazar, Buryuni, Arzakal, al Birjandi, and the astronomers of the Mayrage and Samarkand observatories. Astronomers during that time introduced many Arabic names now used for individual stars, it is also believed that the ruins at Great Zimbabwe and Timbuktu may have housed an astronomical observatory. Europeans had previously believed that there had been no astronomical observation in pre-colonial Middle Ages sub-Saharan Africa but modern discoveries show otherwise. Scientific Revolution Galileo's sketches and observations of the moon revealed that the surface was mountainous. During the Renaissance, Nicholas Copernicus proposed a heliocentric model of the solar system. His work was defended, expanded upon, and corrected by Galileo Galilei and Johannes Kepler. Galileo innovated by using telescopes to enhance his observations. Kepler was the first to devise a system that described correctly the details of the motion of the planets with the Sun at the center. However, Kettler did not succeed in formulating a theory behind the laws he wrote down. It was left to Newton's invention of celestial dynamics and his law of gravitation to finally explain the motions of the planets. Newton also developed the reflecting telescope. Further discoveries paralleled the improvements in the size and quality of the telescope. 
more extensive star catalogues were produced by Lacale. The astronomer William Herschel made a detailed catalogue of nebulosity and clusters, and in 1781 discovered the planet Uranus, the first new planet found. The distance to a star was first announced in 1838 when the parallax of 61 Cygni was measured by Friedrich Bessel. During the 1819th centuries, attention to the three-body problem by Euler, Clairo, and Alembert led to more accurate predictions about the motions of the Moon and planets. This work was further refined by Lagrange and Laplace, allowing the masses of the planets and moons to be estimated from their perturbations. Significant advances in astronomy came about with the introduction of new technology, including the spectroscope and photography. Fraunhofer discovered about 600 bands in the spectrum of the Sun in 1814-15, which, in 1859, Kirchhoff ascribed to the presence of different elements. Stars were proven to be similar to the Earth's own Sun, but with a wide range of temperatures, masses, and sizes. The existence of the Earth's galaxy, the Milky Way, as a separate group of stars, was only proved in the 20th century, along with the existence of external galaxies, and soon after, the expansion of the universe, seen in the recession of most galaxies from us. Modern astronomy has also discovered many exotic objects such as quasars, pulsars, blazars, and radio galaxies, and has used these observations to develop physical theories which describe some of these objects in terms of equally exotic objects such as black holes and neutron stars. Physical cosmology made huge advances during the 20th century, with the model of the Big Bang heavily supported by the evidence provided by astronomy and physics, such as the cosmic microwave background radiation, Hubble's law, and cosmological abundances of elements. Space telescopes have enabled measurements in parts of the electromagnetic spectrum normally blocked or blurred by the atmosphere. In astronomy, the main source of information about celestial bodies and other objects is visible light, or more generally electromagnetic radiation. Observational astronomy may be divided according to the observed region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Some parts of the spectrum can be observed from the Earth's surface while other parts are only observable from either high altitudes or outside the Earth's atmosphere. Specific information on these subfields is given below. Radio Astronomy Radio astronomy studies radiation with wavelengths greater than approximately 1 mm. Radio astronomy is different from most other forms of observational astronomy in that the observed radio waves can be treated as waves rather than as discrete photons. Hence, it is relatively easier to measure both the amplitude and phase of radio waves, whereas this is not as easily done at shorter wavelengths. Although some radio waves are produced by astronomical objects, in the form of thermal emission, most of the radio emission that is observed from Earth is the result of synchrotron radiation, which is produced when electrons orbit magnetic fields. Additionally, a number of spectral lines produced by interstellar gas, notably the hydrogen spectral line at 21 cm, are observable at radio wavelengths. A wide variety of objects are observable at radio wavelengths, including supernovae, interstellar gas, pulsars, and active galactic nuclei. Infrared astronomy Infrared astronomy is founded on the detection and analysis of infrared radiation, wavelengths longer than red light. The infrared spectrum is useful for studying objects that are too cold to radiate visible light, such as planets, circumstellar disks or nebulae, whose light is blocked by dust. Longer infrared wavelengths can penetrate clouds of dust that block visible light, allowing the observation of young stars in molecular clouds and the colors of galaxies. Observations from the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, WISE, have been particularly effective at unveiling numerous galactic protostars and their host star clusters. With the exception of wavelengths close to visible light, infrared radiation is heavily absorbed by the atmosphere, or masked, as the atmosphere itself produces significant infrared emission. Consequently, infrared observatories have to be located in high, dry places, or in space. Some molecules radiate strongly in the infrared. 
This allows the study the chemistry of space, more specifically it can detect water and comets. Optical Astronomy The Subaru Telescope, Left, and Keck Observatory, Center, on Monarchy, both examples of an observatory that operates at near-infrared and visible wavelengths. The NASA Infrared Telescope Facility, right, is an example of a telescope that operates only at near-infrared wavelengths. Historically, optical astronomy, also called visible light astronomy, is the oldest form of astronomy. Optical images of observations were originally drawn by hand. In the late 19th century and most of the 20th century, images were made using photographic equipment. Modern images are made using digital detectors, particularly detectors using charge-coupled devices, CCDs, and recorded on modern medium. Although visible light itself extends from approximately 4000 A to 7000 A, 400 nm to 700 nm, that same equipment can be used to observe some near-ultraviolet and near-infrared radiation. Ultraviolet Astronomy Ultraviolet astronomy refers to observations at ultraviolet wavelengths between approximately 100 and 3200 A, 10 to 320 nm. Light at these wavelengths is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, so observations at these wavelengths must be performed from the upper atmosphere or from space. Ultraviolet astronomy is best suited to the study of thermal radiation and spectral emission lines from hot blue stars, OB stars, that are very bright in this waveband. This includes the blue stars in other galaxies, which have been the targets of several ultraviolet surveys. Other objects commonly observed in ultraviolet light include planetary nebulae, supernova remnants, and active galactic nuclei. However, as ultraviolet light is easily absorbed by interstellar dust, an appropriate adjustment of ultraviolet measurements is necessary. X-ray astronomy X-ray astronomy is the study of astronomical objects at X-ray wavelengths. Typically, X-ray radiation is produced by synchrotron emission, the result of electrons orbiting magnetic field lines, thermal emission from thin gases, above 107, 10 million, kelvins, and thermal emission from thick gases, above 107 kelvin. Since X-rays are absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, all X-ray observations must be performed from high-altitude balloons, rockets, or spacecraft. Notable X-ray sources include X-ray binaries, pulsars, supernova remnants, elliptical galaxies, clusters of galaxies, and active galactic nuclei. X-rays were first observed and documented in 1895 by Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, a German scientist, who found them when experimenting with vacuum tubes. Through a series of experiments, Röntgen was able to discover the beginning elements of radiation. The X in fact, holds its own significance, as it represents Röntgen's inability to identify exactly the type of radiation. Gamma Ray Astronomy Gamma Ray Astronomy is the study of astronomical objects at the shortest wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. Gamma rays may be observed directly by satellites such as the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, or by specialized telescopes called atmospheric Cherenkov telescopes. The Cherenkov telescopes do not actually detect the gamma rays directly, but instead detect the flashes of visible light produced when gamma rays are absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. Most gamma ray emitting sources are actually gamma ray bursts, objects which only produce gamma radiation for a few milliseconds to thousands of seconds before fading away. Only 10% of gamma ray sources are non transient sources. These steady gamma ray emitters include pulsars, neutron stars, and black hole candidates such as active galactic nuclei. Fields not based on the electromagnetic spectrum In addition to electromagnetic radiation, a few other events originating from great distances may be observed from the Earth. In neutrino astronomy, astronomers use heavily shielded underground facilities such as SAGE. GALLEX and Kamiokai-3 for the detection of neutrinos. 
the vast majority of the neutrinos streaming through the Earth originate from the Sun, but 24 neutrinos were also detected from supernova 1987A. Cosmic rays, which consist of very high energy particles that can decay or be absorbed when they enter the Earth's atmosphere, result in a cascade of particles which can be detected by current observatories. Additionally, some future neutrino detectors may also be sensitive to the particles produced when cosmic rays hit the Earth's atmosphere. Gravitational wave astronomy is an emerging new field of astronomy which aims to use gravitational wave detectors to collect observational data about compact objects. A few observatories have been constructed, such as the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Observatory LIGO but gravitational waves are extremely difficult to detect. Combining observations made using electromagnetic radiation, neutrinos, or gravitational waves with those made using a different means, which shall give complementary information, is known as multi-messenger astronomy. Astrometry and Celestial Mechanics Astrometry and Celestial Mechanics One of the oldest fields in astronomy and in all of science, is the measurement of the positions of celestial objects. Historically, accurate knowledge of the positions of the sun, moon, planets, and stars has been essential in celestial navigation, the use of celestial objects, to guide navigation, and in the making of calendars. Careful measurement of the positions of the planets has led to a solid understanding of gravitational perturbations, and an ability to determine past, and future positions of the planets with great accuracy, a field known as celestial mechanics. More recently the tracking of near-Earth objects will allow for predictions of close encounters and potential collisions with the Earth. The measurement of stellar parallax of nearby stars provides a fundamental baseline in the cosmic distance ladder that is used to measure the scale of their universe. Parallax measurements of nearby stars provide an absolute baseline for the properties of more distant stars as their properties can be compared. Measurements of radial velocity and proper motion plot the movement of these systems through the Milky Way galaxy. Astrometric results are the basis used to calculate the distribution of dark matter in the galaxy. During the 1990s, the measurement of the stellar wobble of nearby stars was used to detect large extrasolar planets orbiting nearby stars. Theoretical astronomers use several tools including analytical models, for example, polytropes, to approximate the behaviors of a star, and computational numerical simulations. Each has some advantages. Analytical models of a process are generally better for giving insight into the heart of what is going on. Numerical models reveal the existence of phenomena and effects otherwise unobserved. Theorists in astronomy endeavor to create theoretical models and from the results predict observational consequences of those models. The observation of a phenomena predicted by a model allows astronomers to select between several alternate or conflicting models. Theorists also try to generate or modify models to take into account new data. In the case of an inconsistency, the general tendency is to try to make minimal modifications to the model so that it produces results that fit the data. In some cases, a large amount of inconsistent data over time may lead to total abandonment of a model. Topics studied by theoretical astronomers include stellar dynamics and evolution, galaxy formation, large-scale structure of matter in the universe, origin of cosmic rays, general relativity, and physical cosmology, including string cosmology and astroparticle physics. Astrophysical relativity serves as a tool to gauge the properties of large-scale structures, for which gravitation plays a significant role in physical phenomena investigated, and as the basis for black hole, astro, physics, and the study of gravitational waves. Some widely accepted and studied theories and models in astronomy, now included in the Lambda CDM model are the Big Bang, Cosmic Inflation, dark matter, and fundamental theories of physics. A few examples of this process, physical process experimental tool theoretical model explains slash predicts gravitation radio telescope self-gravitating system emergence of a star system nuclear fusion spectroscopy stellar evolution how the stars shine, 
and how metals formed the Big Bang Hubble Space Telescope, Kobe Expanding Universe Age of the Universe Quantum Fluctuations Cosmic Inflation Flatness Problem Gravitational Collapse X-Ray Astronomy General Relativity Black Holes at the Center of Andromeda Galaxy CNO Cycle and Stars The Dominant Source of Energy for Massive Star Dark matter and dark energy are the current leading topics in astronomy, as their discovery and controversy originated during the study of the galaxies. At a distance of about 8 light minutes, the most frequently studied star is the Sun, a typical main sequence dwarf star of stellar class G2V, and about 4.6 billion years old. The Sun is not considered a variable star but it does undergo periodic changes in activity known as the sunspot cycle. This is an 11-year fluctuation in sunspot numbers. Sunspots are regions of lower than average temperatures that are associated with intense magnetic activity. The sun has steadily increased in luminosity over the course of its life, increasing by 40% since it first became a main sequence star. The Sun has also undergone periodic changes in luminosity that can have a significant impact on the Earth. The Maunder Minimum, for example, is believed to have caused a little ice age phenomenon during the Middle Ages. The visible outer surface of the Sun is called the photosphere. Above this layer is a thin region known as the chromosphere. This is surrounded by a transition region of rapidly increasing temperatures and finally by the superheated corona. At the center of the Sun is the cold region, a volume of sufficient temperature and pressure for nuclear fusion to occur. Above the core is the radiation zone, where the plasma conveys the energy flux by means of radiation. Above that are the outer layers that form a convection zone, where the gas material transports energy primarily through physical displacement of the gas. It is believed that this convection zone creates the magnetic activity that generates sunspots. A solar wind of plasma particles constantly streams outward from the sun, until, at the outermost limit of the solar system, it reaches the heliopause. This solar wind interacts with the magnetosphere of the Earth to create the Van Allen radiation belts about the Earth, as well as the aurora, where the lines of the Earth's magnetic field descend into the atmosphere. Planetary Science Planetary science is the study of the assemblage of planets, moons, dwarf planets, comets, asteroids, and other bodies orbiting the Sun, as well as extrasolar planets. The solar system has been relatively well studied, initially through telescopes, and then later by spacecraft. This has provided a good overall understanding of the formation and evolution of this planetary system, although many new discoveries are still being made. The black spot at the top is a dust devil climbing a crater wall on Mars. This moving, swirling column of Martian atmosphere, comparable to a terrestrial tornado, created the long, dark streak. NASA image. The solar system is subdivided into the inner planets, the asteroid belt, and the outer planets. The inner terrestrial planets consist of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The outer gas giant planets are Jupiter. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Beyond Neptune lies the Kuiper Belt, and finally the Oort Cloud, which may extend as far as a light year. The planets were formed in the protoplanetary disk that surrounded the early Sun. Through a process that included gravitational attraction, collision, and accretion, the disk formed clumps of matter that, with time, became protoplanets. The radiation pressure of the solar wind then expelled most of the unaccreted matter, and only those planets with sufficient mass retained their gaseous atmosphere. The planets continued to sweep up, or eject, the remaining matter during a period of intense bombardment, evidenced by the many impact craters, on the Moon. During this period, some of the protoplanets may have collided, the leading hypothesis for how the Moon was formed. Once a planet reaches sufficient mass, the materials of different densities segregate within, during planetary differentiation. This process can form a stony or metallic core, surrounded by a mantle, and an outer surface. The core may include solid and liquid regions, and some planetary cores generate their own magnetic field, which can protect their atmospheres from solar wind stripping.
a planet or moon's interior heat is produced from the collisions that created the body, radioactive materials, e.g. uranium, thorium, and 26L, or tidal heating. Some planets and moons accumulate enough heat to drive geologic processes such as volcanism and tectonics. Those that accumulate or retain an atmosphere can also undergo surface erosion from wind or water. Smaller bodies without tidal heating cool more quickly and their geological activity ceases with the exception of impact cratering. Stellar Astronomy The study of stars and stellar evolution is fundamental to our understanding of the universe. The astrophysics of stars has been determined through observation and theoretical understanding and from computer simulations of the interior. Star formation occurs in dense regions of dust and gas, known as giant molecular clouds. When destabilized, cloud fragments can collapse under the influence of gravity to form a protostar. A sufficiently dense and hot, coal region will trigger nuclear fusion, thus creating a main sequence star. Almost all elements heavier than hydrogen and helium were created inside the cores of stars. The characteristics of the resulting star depend primarily upon its starting mass. The more massive the star, the greater its luminosity, and the more rapidly it expends the hydrogen fuel in its core. Over time, this hydrogen fuel is completely converted into helium, and the star begins to evolve. The fusion of helium requires a higher core temperature, so that the star both expands in size and increases in core density. The resulting red giant enjoys a brief lifespan before the helium fuel is in turn consumed. Very massive stars can also undergo a series of decreasing evolutionary phases as they fuse increasingly heavier elements. The final fate of the star depends on its mass, with stars of mass greater than about eight times the sun becoming or collapse supernovae, while smaller stars form a white dwarf as it ejects matter that forms a planetary nebulae. The remnant of a supernova is a dense neutron star, or, if the stellar mass was at least three times that of the Sun, a black hole. Close binary stars can follow more complex evolutionary paths such as mass transfer onto a white dwarf companion that can potentially cause a supernova. Planetary nebulae and supernovae are necessary for the distribution of metals to the interstellar medium. Without them, all new stars and their planetary systems would be formed from hydrogen and helium alone. Galactic Astronomy Our solar system orbits within the Milky Way, a barred spiral galaxy that is a prominent member of the local group of galaxies. It is a rotating mass of gas, dust, stars, and other objects held together by mutual gravitational attraction. As the Earth is located within the dusty outer arms, there are large portions of the Milky Way that are obscured from view. In the center of the Milky Way is the core, a bar-shaped bulge with what is believed to be a supermassive black hole at the center. This is surrounded by four primary arms that spiral from the core. This is a region of active star formation that contains many younger population I stars. The disk is surrounded by a spheroid halo of older, population 2 stars, as well as relatively dense concentrations of stars known as globular clusters. Between the stars lies the interstellar medium, a region of sparse matter. In the densest regions, molecular clouds of molecular hydrogen and other elements create star-forming regions. These begin as a compact pre-stellar color, or dark nebulae, which concentrate and collapse in volumes determined by the gene's length to form compact protostars. As the more massive stars appear, they transform the cloud into an H2 region, ionized atomic hydrogen, of glowing gas and plasma. The stellar wind and supernova explosions from these stars eventually cause the cloud to disperse, often leaving behind one or more young open clusters of stars. These clusters gradually disperse, and the stars join the population of the Milky Way. Kinematic studies of matter in the Milky Way and other galaxies have demonstrated that there is more mass than can be accounted for by visible matter. A dark matter halo appears to dominate the mass, although the nature of this dark matter remains undetermined. Extragalactic Astronomy 
This image shows several blue, loop-shaped objects that are multiple images of the same galaxy, duplicated by the gravitational lens effect of the cluster of yellow galaxies near the middle of the photograph. The lens is produced by the cluster's gravitational field that bends light to magnify and distort the image of a more distant object. The study of objects outside our galaxy is a branch of astronomy concerned with the formation and evolution of galaxies, their morphology, description, and classification, and the observation of active galaxies, and at a larger scale, the groups and clusters of galaxies. Finally, the latter is important for the understanding of the large-scale structure of the cosmos. Most galaxies are organized into distinct shapes that allow for classification schemes. They are commonly divided into spiral, elliptical and irregular galaxies. As the name suggests, an elliptical galaxy has the cross-sectional shape of an ellipse. The stars move along random orbits with no preferred direction. These galaxies contain little or no interstellar dust, few star-forming regions, and generally older stars. Elliptical galaxies are more commonly found at the core of galactic clusters, and may have been formed through mergers of large galaxies. A spiral galaxy is organized into a flat, rotating disk, usually with a prominent bulge or bar at the center, and trailing bright arms that spiral outward. The arms are dusty regions of star formation, where massive young stars produce a blutant. Spiral galaxies are typically surrounded by a halo of older stars. Both the Milky Way and our nearest galaxy neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, are spiral galaxies. Irregular galaxies are chaotic in appearance, and are neither spiral nor elliptical. About a quarter of all galaxies are irregular, and the peculiar shapes of such galaxies may be the result of gravitational interaction. An active galaxy is a formation that emits a significant amount of its energy from a source other than its stars, dust, and gas. It is powered by a compact region at the core, thought to be a supermassive black hole that is emitting radiation from infalling material. A radio galaxy is an active galaxy that is very luminous in the radio portion of the spectrum and is emitting immense plumes or lobes of gas. Active galaxies that emit shorter frequency, high-energy radiation include Seyfert galaxies, quasars, and blazars. Quasars are believed to be the most consistently luminous objects in the known universe. The large-scale structure of the cosmos is represented by groups and clusters of galaxies. This structure is organized into a hierarchy of groupings, with the largest being the superclusters. The collective matter is formed into filaments and walls, leaving large voids between. Cosmology Cosmology, from the Greek, cosmos, world, universe, and logos, word, study, or literally logic could be considered the study of the universe as a whole. Observations of the large-scale structure of the universe, a branch known as physical cosmology, have provided a deep understanding of the formation and evolution of the cosmos. Fundamental to modern cosmology is the well-accepted theory of the Big Bang, wherein our universe began at a single point in time, and thereafter expanded over the course of 13.8 billion years to its present condition. The concept of the Big Bang can be traced back to the discovery of the microwave background radiation in 1965. In the course of this expansion, the universe underwent several evolutionary stages. In the very early moments, it is theorized that the universe experienced a very rapid cosmic inflation, which homogenized the starting conditions. Thereafter, nucleosynthesis produced the elemental abundance of the early universe. See also nuclear cosmochronology. When the first neutral atoms formed from a sea of primordial ions, space became transparent to radiation, releasing the energy viewed today as the microwave background radiation. The expanding universe then underwent a dark age due to the lack of stellar energy sources. A hierarchical structure of matter began to form from minute variations in the mass density of space. Matter accumulated in the densest regions, forming clouds of gas, and the earliest stars, the population three stars. 
these massive stars trigger the reionization process and are believed to have created many of the heavy elements in the early universe, which, through nuclear decay, create lighter elements, allowing the cycle of nucleosynthesis to continue longer. Gravitational aggregations clustered into filaments, leaving voids in the gaps. Gradually, organizations of gas and dust merged to form the first primitive galaxies. Over time, these pulled in more matter, and were often organized into groups and clusters of galaxies, then into larger-scale superclusters. Fundamental to the structure of the universe is the existence of dark matter and dark energy. These are now thought to be its dominant components, forming 96% of the mass of the universe. For this reason, much effort is expended in trying to understand the physics of these components. Interdisciplinary Studies Astronomy and astrophysics have developed significant interdisciplinary links with other major scientific fields. Archaeoastronomy is the study of ancient or traditional astronomies in their cultural context, utilizing archaeological and anthropological evidence. Astrobiology is the study of the advent and evolution of biological systems in the universe, with particular emphasis on the possibility of non-terrestrial life. Astrostatistics is the application of statistics to astrophysics to the analysis of vast amount of observational astrophysical data. The study of chemicals found in space, including their formation, interaction, and destruction, is called astrochemistry. These substances are usually found in molecular clouds, although they may also appear in low-temperature stars, brown dwarfs, and planets. Cosmic chemistry is the study of the chemicals found within the solar system, including the origins of the elements and variations in the isotope ratios. Both of these fields represent an overlap of the disciplines of astronomy and chemistry. As forensic astronomy finally, methods from astronomy have been used to solve problems of law and history. Amateur Astronomy Astronomy is one of the sciences to which amateurs can contribute the most. Collectively, amateur astronomers observe a variety of celestial objects and phenomena sometimes with equipment that they build themselves. Common targets of amateur astronomers include the moon, planets, stars, comets, meteor showers, and a variety of deep-sky objects such as star clusters, galaxies, and nebulae. Astronomy clubs are located throughout the world, and many have programs to help their members set up and complete observational programs including those to observe all the objects in the Messier 110 objects or Herschel 400 catalogs of points of interest in the night sky. One branch of amateur astronomy, amateur astrophotography, involves the taking of photos of the night sky. Many amateurs like to specialize in the observation of particular objects, types of objects, or types of events which interest them. Most amateurs work at visible wavelengths, but a small minority experiment with wavelengths outside the visible spectrum. This includes the use of infrared filters on conventional telescopes, and also the use of radio telescopes. The pioneer of amateur radio astronomy was Karl Jansky, who started observing the sky at radio wavelengths in the 1930s. A number of amateur astronomers use either homemade telescopes or use radio telescopes which were originally built for astronomy research, but which are now available to amateurs, e.g. the One Mile Telescope, 87. Amateur astronomers continue to make scientific contributions to the field of astronomy. Indeed, it is one of the few scientific disciplines where amateurs can still make significant contributions. Amateurs can make occultation measurements that are used to refine the orbits of minor planets. They can also discover comets and perform regular observations of variable stars. There are hundreds of local astronomy clubs throughout the world, and many help their members set up and complete observational programs such as ones to observe all the Messier or Herschel catalog objects improvements in digital technology have allowed amateurs to make impressive advances in the field of astrophotography. Unsolved Problems in Astronomy Although the scientific discipline of astronomy has made tremendous strides in understanding the nature of the universe and its, there remain some important unanswered questions. 
answers to these may require the construction of new ground and space-based instruments and possibly new developments in theoretical and experimental physics. What is the origin of the stellar mass spectrum? That is, why do astronomers observe the same distribution of stellar mass as the initial mass function? Apparently regardless of the initial conditions, a deeper understanding of the formation of stars and planets is needed. Is there other life in their universe? Especially, is there other intelligent life? If so, what is the explanation for the Fermi paradox? The existence of life elsewhere has important scientific and philosophical implications. Is the solar system normal or atypical? What caused the universe to form? Is the premise of the fine-tuned universe hypothesis correct? If so, could this be the result of cosmological natural selection? What caused the cosmic inflation that produced our homogeneous universe? Why is there a baryon asymmetry? What is the nature of dark matter and dark energy? These dominate the evolution and fate of the cosmos, yet their true nature remains unknown. What will be the ultimate fate of the universe? How did the first galaxies form? How did supermassive black holes form? What is creating the ultra-high energy cosmic rays?